There's no two ways around it. Braintip has experienced some of the most explosive growth that we've seen in recent memory. There's been a significant adoption in terms of investors who are willing to consider and look at the brain chip opportunity. And there's been an adaption as well in terms of perspective and mind shift surrounding the Akita story. For newer investors, they might be wondering who is brain chip? Where have they emerged from and why have they absolutely started soaring? While for the longer term investors who have been following the story over this past period, it truly has felt like a matter of when and not if. Today we're going to be unpacking this question, why has Brainchip exploded, what have been some of these drivers and where can the story head? We'll talk about some of these frameworks in terms of adoption, how the technology is currently positioned and what it means for BRN moving forward. And make sure you stay until the end because I've got a personal framework about how I think about Brainchip's growth development and it really is one that you can apply to growth stocks and technology names but it's definitely one that you wouldn't have heard before. If you do enjoy this video, don't forget to hit the like button. Feel free to share it out. If you're new here, welcome. We make daily videos every day. So make sure you've subscribed and turn your bell notifications on. Brain chip. To discuss the brain chip opportunity and the story, I thought we could start in quite a familiar face, particularly if you went to business school or you're familiar with many of the theories and concepts surrounding technology and innovation. We're starting with the technology adoption life cycle. It's a visual that you might be familiar with. It's got five components and it really refers to adoption that we see in terms of new technologies and new products. At one end, you have the early innovators and then the early adopters who adopt the products in the early stages. And then we see the early and late majority before the laggards are the last ones who eventually end up taking on the technology or the new product. I think it's an interesting framework to consider not only on the product adoption side, because of, of course, Akita, which is Brainchip's neuromorphic processor, the only currently available, commercially available neuromorphic processor globally, will take time for adoption. Initially, you get one customer in the semiconductor space, that first commercial agreement's the hardest because there's no commercial validation of the technology. Customers don't want to take risks. There are, of course, incumbent technologies that can provide them with solutions. But as you start to see some of your competitors or other compatriots within the space start to adopt a new technology, if there's an opportunity to provide benefit to the product you're starting to develop, as more and more people pick it up and you see the early adopters start to use that technology, then you want to join the majority before it's too late as you don't want to be a laggard and left behind. So it's not only important for the product adoption, but it's also worth thinking about from an investing mindset as well. If you think about a company like Brainchip, in the earliest stages, you have the innovators. Those are the visionaries who really believe in the technology. They obviously have quite a high reward and risk appetite there. They're comfortable in the earliest stage of the market. Then you have the early adopters who start to take those positions. Potentially, it's a little bit more de-risk. They're waiting for a bit more confirmation. Before you see the early majority and then the late majority start to take a position. But what I think is fascinating in, is the adaption of the technology adoption life cycle. The chasm is a period in any product or innovations life cycle that must be crossed. It's that transition from early, speculative, exciting, innovative idea to validated real technology that's here to stay with a product market fit. And what I think is really interesting about Brainchip's recent period, I guess you could say it was catalyzed by Brainchip's news surrounding Akita's implementation in Mercedes, but really it started much earlier with the Megachip's IP licensing agreement and of course Renassus in 2020. But Brainchip's Akita technology has crossed the chasm. It's gone from early stage innovative speculative to this is a real technology with a real use case that customers want to get their hands on and most importantly are willing to put their brand to and pay to use and eventually implement into their products. So Brainchip has started to cross this chasm and that's why there's so much excitement, not only on a product front because of course now customers want to get their hands on this technology. If it's good enough for Mercedes, if it's good enough for Renassus, potentially it might be good enough for us. That could be the mindsets in the CTO officers or the executive officers at many of these technology or consumer product houses. But along with that as well, investors are starting to say, hey, maybe this isn't just a cool idea or too niche or it's a fad. Again, if it's good enough for Mercedes, they've done their due diligence, maybe it's worth us having a look at. And we've started to see very few shares on sale and significant amounts of buyers driving up the share price as demand for the shares goes higher. And we've started to see this adoption take place. And it's a really fascinating position to be.
I'm keen to know your thoughts on it all as well. So drop in a comment below what you think about the brain chip story, where you think it's positioned now, and also a reminder before we dive into, as you guys know, I'm just a bloke on the internet who loves talking about stocks. I'm definitely not a financial advisor. Nothing we discuss on the channel is financial advice. The stocks aren't buy recommendations. It's just a general discussion to be that starting spot for you to do your own research from. And so before we unpack my own personal framework that I'm thinking about the brain chip development pathway with, I thought it was useful thinking about another framework, about life cycles. It's a different sector, it's a different cohort of the market, but everything can be useful to layer on top of our own knowledge. And even though it might not be the same sector, even though it might not be the same types of pieces of information, everything can be useful to help to inform our ultimate decision making process. And so the life cycle of a miner, I think, is fascinating to think about in terms of share price trajectory. Because even though we're talking about semiconductors for brain chip and of course resources for the miners, there is crossover in terms of the trajectory and the focuses for investors at different stage of the development. And so thinking about the life cycle of a miner, in the earliest phases, you're doing your initial digging, the exploration phase, it's very early. I would compare this in the semiconductor space to coming up with the concept. You've got an idea, you don't even know how it will work. What are the customers gonna think? Who knows, that's many years down the track. But for now, you wanna see if this concept potentially has any grounds, if there's any legs actually behind this idea. So that's the exploration phase. And then as you progress through, hang on, maybe we've found something. You've done your exploration work, you actually, hold on, there's something to look further into. Let's get some more drills into the ground. Let's spend some time actually out there and maybe we'll actually start to cordon off a resource and try to define a resource. I would put this as a similar stage in terms of the earliest R&D work in the semiconductor space. You've done a little bit of the work there. You've started to see that maybe there is an opportunity here. We're not sure, we've got to do more work, we've got to spend some more time, but it's actually worth a bit more investment into the engineering and the capital to see what we can uncover. Then you have the discovery. This is real, this is legitimate, there's something here. And this is like the earliest iterations and prototypes of the products that are developed in the semiconductor space. You're not at commercial phase yet, but you've got something there. Maybe we've tried it. There is a little bit of an opportunity. Let's see where we can take it from there. And then in the mining life cycle timelines, you have a bit of an orphan period where there's not a huge amount of excitement in terms of the share price. Often, except for the most ardent or bullish of investors, the broader market kind of loses interest in this period. They're looking for the next shiny and exciting thing. And this is where the development work goes in. It's where the actual success is developed and where you really are working towards construction and then ultimately production. And similarly in the semiconductor space, you've got this opportunity. Now it's about starting to move it towards silicon, doing your initial production runs, testing the initial works that you've got, testing the samples that you have, seeing if we've actually got something on our hands. Can we replicate this and consistently develop a product and slowly move towards commercialization? After that's been done, if you're successful, you can then start thinking about finalizing construction after you've started the financing and moving ultimately to production. And that is the commercialization journey for the semiconductors. And so then that brings us to where is Brainship now? So this is a bit of a framework I've been tossing around in my head about where BRN's currently positioned. And most importantly, why it seems like Brainship has exploded out of nowhere to the newer investors. They might be like, BRN? That's a name I hadn't heard of three, six, 12 weeks ago, but suddenly it's everywhere. Everyone's talking about it. There's so much excitement. Why has this happened? Why is there articles about brain chip? There's new videos about Akita. There's now publications all discussing this brain chip opportunity. How have we got here? Well, if we think sequentially about a progression from the earliest stage of development through, I think it starts to make a bit more sense. So if we think about this progression, you guys know me, I love my sport. Sport is a great equalizer, it's a universal language. Most people understand sport at a conceptual level. And so I think it's worth just thinking about the brain chip development journey in line with how we would think about the earliest, I guess, sport prospects from the junior days in their sport, all the way through until maybe they make it into the big leagues and they're running out onto the field ready for success. So in the earlier stage, you've got the juniors there in the sports. I'm sure everyone remembers running out onto the soccer field on a Saturday morning. You've got the oranges at half time, you're chowing down into them. You're having a lot of fun. And in that early stage, you can see some prospects. You can see who could have the potential. But in that earlier stage, nobody really knows. There's so many prospects, there's so many different opportunities. But really from that R&D phase, it's really about honing in, developing your craft, making sure that the product is there, continuing to put your work in. And if you have success, 
of course, not every prospect's going to make it all the way through. But if you have a successful R&D phase, potentially you might move into the developing the product stage. And I think about this as almost pre-season. It's the pre-season camp that you have before you make it into the big leagues. Maybe you've got the trials with the big sports teams. You've got all the hard work going in behind the lights, behind the closed doors, away from the excitement. But this is truly where the champions are made and where champion seasons are developed. But I think what's really interesting about the preseason, for those sports fans out there, you'll remember that in the earlier stages, there's a lot of eyes on all of the prospects who could potentially go into the draft. There's a lot of excitement about that. But then in the preseason period, all the eyes fade away. Only the most bullish and the most excited of sports fans are watching the preseason. You've got your scouts, you've got your coaches, you've got the team and the internal staff that are watching the preseason. But the rest of the the rest of the sports fans, they're watching something else. Maybe they're watching the tennis or the ashes early on in January in Australia before the footy season kicks off later on in the year. But the preseason is where the hard work goes in. It's where a lot of the development is had. This is where you're running those engineering samples. This is where you're doing the testing. This is where your first chips are coming off the line. And all of the excitement happens for those who are really technologically inclined, those who are very, very bullish on the opportunity. But for the vast majority, they're not really watching preseason. Maybe there's a lot of hypotheses about which teams could be good as you head into the season, but nobody really knows until the season begins. And that's when commercialization is. And that's why they talk about commercialization as the end of one chapter of the journey, but really just the beginning of the next stage of it. And then the season begins. Who knows who's going to be a great team in the season? All you can really base it off is how good the team is, who's positioned well, have they brought in any star recruits? How good is the actual strategies and the tactics they're employing? Or in a semiconductor space, how good is the underlying product itself? And then how well are they able to express what they want to do? How well can they deliver on the field? Or how well they can get out there and signing these commercial deals? That's where Brainchip finds itself now. We've talked about it for the past period of time. They're moving from an R&D phase to a commercialization phase. And this is what we're seeing. We're seeing deals from mega chips, from ISL with the radar, from, of course, the Mercedes deal. But we know there's plenty of EAP deals going on behind closed doors. The work's still going in, developing the product. R&D is continuing on. And the opportunity for commercialization is only just beginning. The first rounds of the season have been fantastic. Maybe they've taken a few external viewers and stakeholders by surprise. But I think for those longer term investors who have been watching Brainship, perhaps since the earliest junior days, or maybe since the preseason days as they've been developing the product, they've known what was going on. They knew the potential that was there. And this is merely validation for the work and the research that they've been watching over the earliest parts of the season. But of course, it's worth understanding, and I don't think any investor nor the Brainchip internal team believes that they've made it yet, and that they're the championship winning side. This is only the beginning of that journey, and there's many miles to go to become that championship winning side, to see wide-scale commercialization, to see Akita everywhere, in all of the digitally integrated devices, to see Akita facilitating AI processing at the edge across the sectors. We know it's product agnostic. We know it has the opportunity to truly influence the world of technology and the way that we live in this world around us. But this is only the earliest stages of the journey. And so where to from here? Investors will be looking for more commercial agreements, further R&D, perhaps it's the 2000, AKD 3000, AKD 500. They'll be looking for more insights about how the technology is being implemented and the earliest insights surrounding customer adoption and how they're finding it. And then of course, excitement surrounding products, eventually getting Akita within them and us seeing them in the world around us over the coming years. It's an exciting period. There's so much to look forward to. This is the very early stages and this next decade and beyond for Akita and the Brain Chip story is definitely a journey that will be worth watching. And of course, it goes without saying, it's still early on in the journey. It's still only the first few games of the season. There's plenty more to go until the postseason and the finals, but it's the potential. It's the opportunity. It's the TAM and the continued scalability that Akita provides that's exciting a lot of investors recently. If you did enjoy this video, don't forget to hit the like button. Feel free to share it out. If you're new here, as mentioned, daily videos each and every day. So make sure you've subscribed, turn your bell notifications on so you don't miss any of those. Thank you so much for joining us. Keen to hear your thoughts on it all. Akita Ballista, for now, stay well and happy investing.